at only 1800 RPM, it's already putting out 58 amps. So your, your actual charge rate is going to be pretty close to 3x what the factory 65 amp alternator, simply because the power comes on so much sooner. Today we're going to be installing this 105 amp alternator. It's a marine alternator uh, with spark arresters and everything built in, as you can see. It's a one wire alternator. You've got one terminal for the charge, and then you've got a ground. There's no sensing or exciting wires. So it's a very simple installation. We're gonna be replacing the factory 65 amp alternator on our Volvo Penta 8.2 GSI. Uh, typically, most of the V8 Volvos and Merc Cruisers come with a 55 or 65 amp alternator. Uh, on this one, you'll see the fan is slightly different than our new one, uh, but it is a V-belt pulley, so hopefully we won't have to change the pulley. The mounting style is the same. You've got the one thinner bracket on top, the one thicker bracket on the bottom, and if you see, lines up the same on this one. You've got the thinner bracket and a thicker one here, and our fan is different, but our pulley is still a V-belt pulley. So hopefully install will be pretty straightforward. The factory wiring is a little bit different. Uh, there's two wires we're not gonna use. So this orange wire here, that's usually orange or red, uh, it's orange on uh, most boats, that's gonna be your charging wire, and that will go to the single post on the new alternator. You're gonna have a purple wire here. Uh, you're not gonna use that. And you're gonna have a grounding wire, which is this guy here. You will put that on the new alternator on the housing, and you'll have one more wire here that you're not gonna use either. So the unused wires, you're gonna to want to um, uh, put some heat shrink on the end, make sure you insulate any of the metal portions and uh, zip time aside so that they don't dangle around. And then the only two wires again that we're gonna use are the charging wire and the ground wire. Now let's get started. On some motors, you're going to have a belt tensioner, and on some motors, your alternator will be what tensions the belt. On this one, the alternator is what adjusts and tensions the belt um, for this particular belt. Uh, so first, you want to undo this top bolt, and that'll allow the alternator to swivel back and forth like this. You'll swivel it to the left, and then the belt will have enough slack to come off. And then once uh, that happens, you can take the bottom bolt off. Uh, the bottom bolt will have a nut on the back side of it. The top bolt threads directly into the housing. So make sure to put a wrench on the nut and undo it from the front. Don't lose your nut because you're going to need it. And then we should be able to take the alternator off. All right, we've got the top bolt removed, loosened up the bottom bolt so that we could uh, move the alternator easily. So as you can see, swivels back and forth now real easily. We've got enough room to pull the belt off. If your uh, belt goes on to several different pulleys, make sure you take a picture beforehand so that you remember where it goes. And if you don't remember, you can always refer back to the photo. So the alternator is loose now. Before I take off this bottom bolt, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to remove all the wires on the rear um, the orange wire is probably going to run into your battery, so make very, very certain that you insulate it, wrap it in uh, tape or something so that you don't uh, end up causing a short. Now we've got the wires disconnected. This is the ground, and I've got the charge wire, the orange one, and a pink wire. Um, the purple wire on this uh, particular engine is actually just running from the exciter to the charge um, uh, terminal. and on your particular boat, if you do have a purple wire and some of your other electronics might be tied to it, all you need to do is run the purple wire directly to your charging post and it will continue to function as, uh, as normal. So now that we've got the wires off, I went ahead and took the nut off the back of this bolt and we should be able to just wiggle the uh, alternator around and as you do, take some of the pressure off the threads on the bolt, and you should be able to remove it. Helps to turn it slightly while removing. There we go, that bolts out. And now we can 
remove the alternator from the bracket. Typically it's gonna be pretty tight in there. So you might need to get some leverage and keep wiggling to get it out. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it out. So what I'm gonna do is use uh, a wrench as a lever. And there we go. That's out. That's the old alternator. This is the back of it with the posts. Your charging post is this guy here. Your uh, exciter post is this one here, and this one is the ground post. So we're gonna put this aside and now get the new alternator lined up and see if everything lines up as far as the wires go and then put everything together. I've got the new alternator on the bracket. I put the bottom bolt through and just hand tighten the nut on the back, just enough to where it's holding firmly, but still swivels. Uh, this alternator came with a new bolt for the top. Yours may or may not. Um, so make sure to keep the old butt bolt in case you have to use it. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this in here just enough to where it sits in place, just to get the bolt out of the way so I don't misplace it and make sure it still moves freely and it lines up with the bracket, which it does. Uh, next, I'm going to put the ground cable on, which is this one here. Generally, it's gonna be your black cable, the smaller of the two between the charge cable and the ground. And on this alternator, it goes up here. And my wiring harness is uh, kind of under the alternator. I'm gonna bring it up and around to the top so that I have more slack there and I can reach it. All right, we've got our ground wire on the terminal and tightened up. We've got our charge wire on the positive terminal and tightened up. And this is the only wire we've got left. I'm gonna go ahead and put some heat shrink on the end of this and uh, get it insulated and then I'll get it zip tied backwards like this on here so that it's out of the way and doesn't come in contact with anything and doesn't rattle around and then you'll uh, the, the belt's still loose so you'll want to pull back on the alternator and uh, get enough tension on the belt and then tighten this top screw to set the tension and you should be all set to fire things up so here's the test sheet that comes with the alternator. Uh, any decent alternator should come with one. It's listed as 100 amp. Some places you'll see this alternator listed as 104, 105. Some places it's listed as 94 or 95 amp. Um, it's, uh, it's all the same alternator as long as that's the part number you're getting, ADR0334. And the important part of these test results is seeing what sort of amperage you're getting at different RPMs. Now our factory, alternator was 65 amp at max. So what that means is at around 6, 5,000, 6,000 RPM. Now, if you look at this one here at only 1800 RPM, it's already putting out 58 amps. So in real world scenario, you're not gonna be going wide open throttle. And that 65 amp alternator, the factory one, it's probably producing somewhere around 25, 30 amps at uh, 1800 RPM and this is already producing uh, 58 amps, which is pretty close to the maximum that the old one was able to produce. And uh, as you can see, the numbers there, uh, 68 amps at 2000 RPM, 82 at 2400, uh, almost 100 amps at 3500 RPM. So your, your actual charge rate is gonna be pretty close to 3X, uh, at least two and a half X, what the factory 65 amp alternator was uh, was doing for you simply because the power comes on so much sooner with this alternator and you're going to be able to charge those batteries in uh, probably uh, uh, at least a half half the time as before but probably a third of the time uh, i would bet especially if you have the 55 amp alternator from the factory so hope this video was helpful for you if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. And good luck. And see you next time.